Anna Maria Island is a little slice of paradise on Florida's Gulf Coast known for its charming small town feel and sugar white sandy beaches. Today, we're visiting to show you around the island. If you've ever been wondering what to do, where to eat, or if you just need a bit of a virtual vacation, then keep watching. This video is for you. breakfast at Jenny and Jane E's. It's both a gift shop and a restaurant so you can come here even if you don't want to eat. They have a little bit of everything. Things for the garden, things you might want to take home, gifts for yourself. You can shop while you wait for your food and it's good food as well. Really unique place for breakfast on Anna Maria Island. There's another place you have to try for breakfast it's called the Donut Experiment. So they make the donut, you choose your toppings, um, like the, the glaze type stuff, and then one topping, and then the drizzle. I've been dreaming of this place since we tried it three years ago. I don't think we've been back on the island since then. If we have, we've been here, and I've been thinking about it ever since. It's so good. Today we got one of their specialty donuts, which was key lime. And then I got um, the chocolate glaze and drizzle with um, Reese's Pieces. So, really good. If you are not a donut person for breakfast, then come here for dessert. Just know that they close at 1 p.m. Behind me is Pine Ave, and the cool thing about Pine Ave is that it has shopping, restaurants, all the things that you would expect in a cute little beach town. But on one end is the beach, and on the other end is the pier. So there is water on both sides of Pine Ave. So whichever side you wanna be on, you can't go wrong. I would say the most beautiful, gorgeous beaches are on one side, and then like on the pier side, it's more like the bay type of swimming, so it's still pretty. But the crystal clear blue water with like the finest, most beautiful sands are on the other side. Both are great. The day we filmed the majority of this video, it was pretty cloudy, as you've probably noticed, and while the beach is still beautiful on a cloudy day, we all know it's even better on a sunny day. So I'm gonna show you what the beaches look like when the sun is out. This is just from a different day that we were there. But the beach is Anna Maria Island's main attraction. Most people spend their days right here at the beach or going back and forth between the beach and the pool if your vacation rental comes with a pool. As with many beach towns, just looking at the huge beach houses and the cute little cottages is such a fun activity. There are tons of vacation rentals in Anna Maria Island, but actually not too many hotels. What's nice is that there are options for basically any number of people in your group. If there's just two of you, there are vacation rentals for that. But then there's also massive rentals that can fit multiple generations or multiple families. This is just a view driving across Pine Avenue, which is the street we were just talking about. It runs the width of the island, but it's not super long, just over about a half a mile. And like I had just mentioned, there's shopping, dining, and things like that. Depending on what you're into, you could easily spend the whole day here, but some people just spend a couple of hours and that's totally fine too. Just kind of depends on what you're looking for in your vacation. It's not. 
We just finished up at the Anna Maria Historical Museum. It is free and it's a small, like one and a half, two room museum full of history from Anna Maria. They talked a lot about the settlers. You've probably heard of Bean Point. It's the edge of the island and it's one of the most popular beaches to go to in Anna Maria Island. I had heard of it, but I had no idea that it was named after Mr. Bean, who was the first person to settle here in Anna Maria Island. So it's a really cool way to cool off and learn more about the history of this beautiful paradise that is Anna Maria Island. Everybody could make a wrong turn. You waver and slip and you get burned. Well, I'm here, so don't you worry. Cause you know I'll be there in a hurry. And then right behind the museum, you'll see the old Anna Maria jail. It's not a whole lot anymore, but it did used to be a jail and it did not have windows just like it doesn't now. It was just open air. So probably not a great place to be. I feel like you should be able to just feel the heat through this video. It is so hot and muggy today. It is wild. So that is not a place that I would have wanted to be locked up. But definitely check it out when you're visiting Anna Maria. It's right on Pine Ave. So when you're stopping in and out of shops, you can stop at both the museum and the jail. Easy stops, you're gonna wanna check them out. It's pretty cool to see this old piece of history. Anna Maria Island has a lot of restaurant options and I'm gonna show you one that's around two miles away from Pine Avenue. This is the Ugly Grouper and you'll know that you're there when you see the Ugly Grouper. It's a statue that's made out of recycled car parts, Harley Davidson motorcycles, and a few other odds and ends. You can't miss it, it is 14 feet tall. The food here is pretty good. It is a bit pricey, but it's what you can expect on an island in a vacation town, nothing too crazy. The restaurant has live music every day as long as the weather is good and speaking of weather let's talk about that a little bit i want to talk about rain in florida and what you can expect if the forecast shows rain i think we're gonna get a good opportunity to show you why i always tell people not to worry too much about the weather conditions so a common question that i see being asked and that we get asked about rain in florida is that it's really common to check your weather app and for it to say that there's a chance of rain every day of your trip, especially if you're visiting during rain season, which is June through October. So first of all, I don't take that seriously unless that percentage is over around a 60%. And even then, if it's over 60%, chan the chances of it raining actually all day are very slim unless there's like a big system, like a tropical storm or something. Most of the time it's gonna rain for like 30 minutes and then it's gonna be just like it never happened. It's also really common for it to downpour in one very isolated area and to not rain at all basically across the street. So if you're coming to Anna Maria Island and it 
it says it's gonna rain every day, I wouldn't worry about it too much unless the percentages are really high and there's like a tropical storm or something like that. All right, so we are getting ready to drive into this. It is probably gonna be a pretty gnarly storm. We saw some gnarly lightning. But over there, that's Anna Maria Island. I want to give you another option for lunch and of course there are many more options than these two that I'm showing you but this is the Freckled Finn Irish Pub. They have American bar type food but as to be expected they are known for their corned beef and cabbage plus they have amazing fish and chips. During the day it's a good restaurant and it's kid friendly they have a kids menu and all of that but then they also have live music and it kind of turns into more of a bar like atmosphere during the later evening hours. So really, it's just the best of both worlds depending on what you're looking for. One downside about Anna Maria Island, traffic on the way in, on those day trips or whatever you're doing here, it's insane most of the time, especially if you want to come in around like 9, 10 a.m. Um, or anytime after that really, <laughs> traffic's pretty heavy. So be prepared for that. Uh, over the bridge, you're gonna be waiting. It's stop and go almost the whole way. Um, and then finding parking might be tricky. We were lucky today, found it almost immediately. But people that stay here uh, in Anna Maria for the long week don't seem to mind it as much uh, than people that do the day trip. People that come in here and stay for a week, they rent the golf cart, they have all the opportunity to drive around. Um, also, golf carts don't really take up much space when you're looking for parking. So you can kind of fit into a lot of more narrow spots. Um, to where if you're doing a day trip, you're taking your, you know, your main vehicle here, maybe it's a bigger vehicle. Another way to kind of beat the traffic once you're on the island is that there is a trolley that's free that goes up and down the island. So really, once you get to the island, traffic tends to not be as big of a deal. But again, if you're like us and coming for the day, it just can be challenging to sit in the traffic for so long to get on the island and then find that parking. Now, we don't really have any groundbreaking tips for avoiding the traffic or the wait times. Basically, just get there early and you'll be fine, just like anywhere else. But this video is of us coming onto the island. All those cars going the other way are actually trying to leave. I would say that the traffic in this video isn't even that bad because we were coming onto the island at kind of a weird time of day. So it can definitely get worse than this, but this just kind of shows a little bit of what to expect when you are trying to get on and off or anywhere around the island. All right, now let's get back to the Pine Avenue. We already showed you the beach and we showed you some of the shopping along the way, but now we're at the other end at the pier. It's so cool to walk from the beach to the pier, just being completely surrounded by water. It doesn't get much more vacation than that. All right guys, so at the end of the pier is this cool little spot for kids and just actually anybody. It's, a, it's called the Moat Laboratory. And there's a bunch of cool stuff in here and there is a, uh, there's a touch tank over there with some cool little creatures and stuff you can reach in and touch. There's also this coloring pad here so you can get some good coloring. Cool place to learn a little bit more and about. Sometimes the crayons taste actually pretty good. <laughs>
are at the sandbar, uh, which is at the beach side of Pine Ave. Look at this view we have here. It's right on the beach. It's incredible. <laughs> we got some fun drinks, and uh, we're about to get some good food here. We got some calamari coming, but we're really excited to eat here. It's really kind of a nice place, and they have like a pretty good menu with a good variety of like different kind of seafood, and if you're not interested in seafood, they have other stuff too. But yeah, we're really excited. Normally we would end our night with a drink and there are plenty of beach bars and other just like cute little bars around here to do that at. But life looks a little bit different now so we are ending it with ice cream. Santa Maria Island is such a great place for like a day trip from St. Pete or Tampa Bay area. It's a really short drive over here or even a shorter boat ride, honestly. Like if you were to come on your boat from like, uh, like DeSoto or something like that, it's really, really close on a map if you look at it. It's also pretty close to like Fort Myers, Cape Coral. It's not, it's not that far of a drive. And if you're not gonna make a day trip, also come here for a week. It's, it's great, you can rent a golf cart, drive around the whole island. There's tons of restaurants, tons of stuff to do kind of never run out, plus the beautiful beaches in the water, it, 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 it's enough. Hope you enjoyed this video, see you next time. This is how hot it is, this is, this is what I look like, this is what it is, it is what it is, I guess. All right guys, so we're in a minute, yeah. restart.